Prime Minister Bonn, uh, dear Minister, dear Philippe, dear professors, ladies and gentlemen. Let me begin by thanking uh, President Macron for convening this conference in such an important moment. Prime Minister, uh, your words highlight how central research is not only for France, but for the whole continent. Science is at the heart of our European agenda. Allow me to start with a question. What does it mean to be a scientist today, in 2025? Think about it. Today, 83% of Europeans think that the impact of science and technology in our lives is positive. Yet, we are surrounded by growing skepticism and mistrust. Over a third of the world population disputes the human origins of climate change. Just a few years ago, the development of RNA vaccines saved millions of lives. This was made possible specifically thanks to sustained EU investment into life sciences. Yet many fell victim to conspiracies undermining trust in science, including in the country that I know best. What does it mean to be a scientist? Is it pointing to evidence even when few listen? Is it defending truth even in, in an age of disinformation? Is it asking uncomfortable questions even if it means speaking up to power? What is clear is that being a scientist is much more than just profession. It's a calling. Research drives our innovation capacity and our competitiveness. Every euro invested through the Horizon Europe research program today will generate 11 euros of GDP gains by 2045. But it is more than economics. It's about people, our shared human aspiration to understand the world and make progress. This is why we are determined to make Europe the best place in the world to do research and to be a researcher. Europe is already a scientific powerhouse. We have prestigious universities, like one we are here today, and research organizations. We invest in talent, and we host 25% of the world's researchers, with only 5% of the global population. And we are the great at developing innovative ideas and generating startups. But we cannot be complacent. We need to understand the reality that scientists face today. Early career scientists struggle with job security. In OECD countries, three in four researchers don't have job security. And of course, women face distinct challenges holding just one in four of the highest academic positions. Scientific freedom is sometimes under threat. Universities and scientific fields overseas are seeing funding cut for political ideology. Elsewhere, authoritarian regimes imprison scientists for just doing their job. Schools and universities have become targets in countries at war. We want to be a union that fosters and protects knowledge. Our researchers can focus on the free pursuit of knowledge and where global talent can thrive. This is why we are building a strong European research area. The European Research Area Act that we are working on will enshrine freedom of scientific research into European law. This will ensure that all scientists and all disciplines are protected everywhere in our Union. The, the Act will improve research careers and mobility. We will look at fair payment rates in international projects, the portability of social security rights, 
and specific actions for women in science. We are also reforming research assessment frameworks because we don't believe that publish or perish should guide academia. Researchers should be judged by the quality of their work, not by an index next to their name. We want our European research area to be open so that the best talent can come and stay in Europe. Our efforts are paying off. 70% of non-EU fellows we support are still in Europe two years later. And of course, Horizon Europe, the largest international research program in the world, is open to everybody. Freedom, reliability, openness are our response to a fragmented and uncertain world. Let me illustrate this. After Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Dr. Natalia Petrik fled the war with her two children. In Europe, Dr. Petrik found the solidarity of our research community and the openness of EU initiatives. She joined the European Research Council grant at the Karolinska Institute in Sweden. There she studied diagnostic markers preventing miscarriages. She hopes to use them in her clinic back in Kiev one day. This is a testimony to a Europe that welcomes talent and channels it for the global public good. Ladies and gentlemen, the European Commission is committed to this vision, to make Europe the best place for researchers by protecting their freedom, supporting their careers, and by amplifying their ideas. Thank you very much for your attention.